Hi everyone. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself to you all first. My name is Neeraj Kheria and I have been working in this domain for more than 14 years now, where I have been leading the global design and development teams for designing enterprise solutions for different industry verticals. And mostly I have been active in the markets of India, US, Canada, Singapore, Australia and other Southeast Asian markets so far. All right. So here we are going to focus on how exactly the blockchain is basically structured. So we'll be talking about that and how exactly it is defined. So let's open up the content here. All right, so as a part of the agenda for today, we are going to first of all understand on what exactly Bitcoin and the blockchain is. So here we are going to discuss on what is Bitcoin, the Bitcoin transactions and what exactly blockchain is and different blockchain technologies. And then we are going to discuss on the features of blockchain, the blockchain applications, and what are the current issues available with the banking system here. And then we are going to have a discussion on the how Bitcoin solves these different problem statements. And then if time allows, then we are going to have a small discussion on the same as well. So first of all, in terms of the hands-on, first of all, the growth of Bitcoin and blockchain has been so rapid that even those who haven't heard of cryptocurrency or know about its working are looking to invest and explore this field. So the blockchain is again has been one of the hottest topic in the industry in the last five years now. So blockchain technology and the cryptocurrencies have today become a parallel platform where the people have started performing their standard transactions. Now, if a system is slowly replacing an existing system, then there must be some issues with the current system as well. So, first of all, if you talk about the Bitcoin setup itself, so Bitcoin is what? Bitcoin is basically they are cryptocurrencies and they are a digital payment system invented by an unknown programmer. So, still the identity of those of again the team or the person who invented Bitcoin is still hidden. They are again still under the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. That means they can be used like a usual currency, but they don't physically exist like a dollar bill. So they are an online currency which can be used to buy things and they are similar to digital cash that exist uh, again as bits on people's computers. So Bitcoins exist only in the cloud like PayPal, Citrus or Paytm. And even though they are virtual, rather than being physical, they are used like cash when transferred between people through the web framework. So Bitcoin system is basically a peer-to-peer -peer network based and the transactions take place between users directly here. And these transactions, they are verified by network nodes and they are recorded in a public distributed ledger called as a blockchain. Now, since the system works without a central repository or a single administrator, Bitcoin is called as the first decentralized digital currency out there and Bitcoin production makes them a unique currency. So unlike novel currencies, Bitcoins cannot be created as needed. Only 21 million Bitcoins can be created of which 17 million have already been created. Bitcoin get created whenever a block containing a valid transaction is added to the blockchain. Now this is the only means for creating Bitcoins and through various mathematical and encryption algorithms, we ensure that no fake Bitcoins are created or circulated. So this is what we have. So again, the transaction here, we can take the example that we are looking at the screen here. We can take the transaction where Thomas wants to transfer 500 Bitcoins to Matthew. So the transaction is part of the new block that will be validated by miners and John and Adam. So John and Adam are miners who use their resources to validate the block that is going to contain the transaction altogether. And once the block has been validated, money is going to be deducted from Thomas account and then it is going to be transferred to Matthew's Bitcoin account as well as and when required. So after this, we are going to have the final step where we, John is going to get 12.5 Bitcoins as incentive, which becomes the first transaction for the next block. Now the current block becomes a permanent part of the blockchain that we are looking at. Now you may have a question what exactly a blockchain is. So we can say blockchain can be called the spine of entire cryptocurrency system. So blockchain technology not only helps with the user perf users perform transactions using cryptocurrencies, but they also ensure 
that the security and anonymity of the users involved are also maintained as a part of the blockchain so it basically we can say it's like a continuously growing list of records called as blocks which are linked and secure using cryptographic techniques so a blockchain can serve as an open and distributed ledger that can record transactions between two parties in a verifiable and permanent way and this ledger that is shared among everyone in the network is public for all to view and this brings the transparency and trust into the system so we can say a block is like a current part of the blockchain which records some or all of the recent transactions and once completed goes into the blockchain as permanent database now each time a block gets completed a new block is also going to get generated so the blockchain is typically managed by peer to peer network collectively adhering to a protocol for validating the new blocks that we have the access and as we discussed here again it's a part of the peer to peer network so basically it collects the protocol for validating a new block and once recorded the data in any given block cannot be altered without altering the subsequent blocks and a collision of the network majority so transactions once stored in the blockchain they are again they are all going to be permanent and they cannot be hacked or they cannot be manipulated they cannot be hacked or manipulated so we are going to learn about this once we get the again as we move into the full fledged discussion on top of blockchain here so if we talk about the features of blockchain then first of all here we do get the sha256 hash functions also available then again here we do get the access to a public key so we do get the access to a public key cryptography for securing the data and then it is going to be part of distributed ledger and peer to peer network and then here we do get the proof of work and incentives for validation for the transactions that has happened so if we talk about this hash functions then the core hash algorithm used in blockchain is the sha256 and the purpose of using a hash is because the output is not encrypted that is it cannot be decrypted back into the original text now it is a one way cryptographic function and is a fixed size for any size of the source text so then we have the public key cryptography as a part of distributed public ledger so this cryptographic technique helps the users by creating a set of keys referred as a public key and a private key now here the public key is shared with the others whereas the private key is kept as a secret by the user altogether and to understand the role of keys we can we are going to have a discussion where we are going to have a discuss we can say a full ledger discussion on the same and then we have a complete distributed network that we have seen already now if you talk about the incentives of validation then again incentives again they are different so the last step of a bitcoin transaction is to give reward to the miners who has created to any miner who has created the latest block and this reward is provided by a blockchain system for validating the transactions and maintaining the blockchain altogether so currently the reward per block is 12.5 bitcoins and per block the reward is 12.5 bitcoins per block and this is the most interesting part of bitcoin mining so bitcoin incentives is the only way to generate new currency into the system and it is believed that by 2140 around all 21 million bitcoins will be mined and with this we will be having a better understanding and appreciation towards the blockchain technology so blockchain is much more than bitcoin so finance is just one of the many industries blockchain is currently working on and moving ahead with the blockchain discussion so we can discuss on the use case of the business suite of the of the requirement and that too but is having a simple scenario for the banking system and what are the current issues with the banking transaction system here so in terms of the blockchain applications then it is used in the bitcoin store as a part of the online marketplace that sells a variety of electronic gadgets it can is used in again in other e-commerce stores that we have again the online marketplaces now if you talk about the issues with the current banking system so any existing system will have some issues so for example we will be having the high transaction fees where for example let's understand this we have two guys we have chandler and then joy So Chandler is sending hundred dollars to Joe, but it must pass through a trusted third party like a bank or financial service company 
before Joe can receive it. So a transaction fees of 2% is deducted from this amount and Joe only receives $98 at the end of the transactions. Now, this may not seem a big amount, but imagine if you were sending $100,000 instead of $100. Then the transaction fees increases to $2,000, which is a big amount. Now, as for a report in the CNN Money and the SLN Financial Reports, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo earned more than $6 billion from ATM and overdraft fees in 2015. So here, what we are doing here, we are simply double spending. So double spending is basically an error in digital cash scheme in which the same single digital token is spent twice or more. So here, for example, let's say here we have Peter. Now, Peter has only $500 in his account. So he initiates two transactions simultaneously to add him for 400 and marry for 500. Normally, this transaction would not go through as he has, he has he doesn't have sufficient balance of 900. However, by duplicating or by falsifying the digital token associated with every digital transactions, he can complete these transactions without needing the balance. And this operation is known as double spending. Again, a drawback of the banking system. And again, there have been multiple crashes due to depressions and again, the fractional reserve banking and on top of it we have this is the same thing that happened back in 2007-8 when the banks and investment organizations had borrowed heavily and lent it as a subprime mortgages to people who could not even pay back these loans and this in turn led to one of the greatest financial crises ever seen and was estimated to have caused losses close to 11 trillion dollars and this was just one of the most popular examples of how often how, how we heard of banks and financial services crash due to the internal frauds. So these are the drawbacks or in, in the existing service. So how does Bitcoin solve these issues? So it solves, first of all, by using the decentralized system. So blockchain system follows a decentralized approach when it, compare, when it is compared to banks and financial organizations which are controlled and governed by central or federal authorities. Now here, anyone who is a part of the system becomes equally responsible for the growth and downfall of the system. Now, rather than one single entity holding the power, everyone who is involved with the system holds some power. And then we'll be having the public ledgers, which is going to be accessible. So the ledger holds the details of transactions which happen on the blockchain. So it is open and completely accessible to everyone who is associated with the system. Now, once we join the blockchain network, then we can download and complete list of transactions since the initiation. Now, even though the complete ledger is publicly accessible, the details of the people involved in transactions remains completely anonymous. And then we have the verification of every individual transaction. So every single transaction is verified by cross-checking the ledger and the validation signal of the transaction is sent after a few minutes. Now, through the usage of several complex encryption and hashing algorithm, the issue of double spending is eliminated. And here we have low to no transaction fees in blockchain. We have no to almost, we can say no transaction, we can say fees here. So the transaction fees are usually not applicable, but certain variants of blockchain do implement certain minimal transaction fees. So these transaction fees are, however, relatively quite less when compared to the fees implied by banks and other financial organizations. So if a transaction needs to be completed on priority, then an additional transaction fees can be added by the users so as to have the transaction verified on, on priority. Now, we have spoken about the issues with the current existing system and understood how the blockchain technology overcomes these challenges. So now, I'm quite sure that you must have got some basic understanding of how the blockchain system simply works. So first of all, a big thank you to you all everyone for being a part of the entire session. Take care. Bye-bye.